Happy Tuesday, everybody. Good evening. Um, this is another episode of SEIU Says. We thank you for allowing us in your home. If you're streaming us live off the internet, we thank you. My name is Charlie Bonds. I'm your host today, and we have a beautiful guest. Introduce yourself. I'm Anita Chapala. All right, so sit back, relax. Um, don't touch that dial. Don't touch that remote control. Don't go water that Chia Pet, and don't fill up the ice trays right now. You know why? Because you're about to watch another episode of SEIU Says. When you teach the children to jump the very best you can The world won't get no better If we just let it be The world won't get no better All right. SEIU says it's sponsored by the GWC. That's Goldberg, Weissman, Cairo, Illinois' largest personal injury and workers' compensation law firm. If you have questions about medical malpractice, personal injury, or workers' comp, you can give SEIU Local 73 a phone call, and we'll send you right over to Goldberg, Weissman, Cairo. SEIU's phone number is 312-588-7630. That number, once again, is 312-588-7630. All right, so um, we want you to get a pen and a piece of paper because we have a wonderful show for you today. But on a more um, important note right now, as you know, the right to work with our current governor, um, Mr. Rahner, this vote will be taking place this Thursday in Springfield. And so if you are our union members, we're asking that you would call your state representatives. You need to find out who your state representative is in your state Senate in, you know, in your area. I'm sorry, in your area, rather, your local representative and your local senator in that area, and you want to have them vote no against Mr. Rahner's new bill to make Illinois the right-to-work state. Um, you can get information on that by visiting our website. Um, it's social media time, everyone. That's right, it's social media time. We ask that you go visit SEIU Local 73. Our website is SEIU73.org. That website is SEIU73.org. And you can get information on what's going on with Bruce Warner and what he's trying to do about changing our state around into a right to work state. So you definitely want to reach out to our lobbyists, our activists that are out there, our leaders. Um, get in contact with them and you want to have them to vote no on this new um, bill that's about to be passed. All right, so everybody, M- May is date your mate month. All right, so I have a philosophy. If you're not, and, and how this work with the union show is, if you're not happy at home, then you're not going to be happy when you go to work, <laughs> right? That's true. <laughs> All right, so what we want to do is we want to get clear up some myths. We want to um, answer some questions about dating, you know, how to date your mate, if your mate might be yourself, or how to just bring the sparkle back alive in your marriage at home, all right? And we're going to ask that we save the calls to like about the last 10 minutes of the show if you do have questions because we got a whole lot of information that we want to give out to everybody so everybody can feel good about dating they mate. All right, so we, get, we introduce yourself. Introduce yourself again. My name is Anita Chapala. Okay, and where do you work, Anita? Uh, I am the owner of Relationship Reality 312 here in the Loop. Okay, and you're a relationship coach, correct? Correct. So I'm actually licensed as a marriage and family therapist, Mm -hmm. and I tell people that I do anything under the love umbrella. So I work with singles and couples, helping them find and keep love. And with my singles, they often come to me looking for help with why are they single, what's wrong with them, why are they attracting the wrong type. Mm -hmm. And with my couples, I help them with their communication, things like conflict, Mm -hmm. infidelity, parenting, stress, things like that. Okay, that's good, okay. What made you um, choose this particular path? Is it a life calling or uh, it's def- are you secretly Cupid? <laughs> I, mean... I wish, I uh, I got paid for that. Um, it definitely is a life calling. I mm-hmm. consider myself uh, that I have my dream job. Mm-hmm. I used to be a teacher, this was over a decade ago, and when I attended a talk on dating and relationships, the mm-hmm. speaker was a marriage and family therapist. And it was just this aha moment, and I thought, this is what I want to do. And so mm-hmm. I asked her more questions, mm-hmm. barely researched any grad schools, and then mm-hmm. just ended up going to University of San Diego to get my master's in marital family therapy. Wow. Yeah. So you, you're a Band-Aid to the family. <laughs> That's good. That's true. And marriages. <laughs> and, and marriages. Relationships. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. So, okay. So, 
Okay, I guess the first question is, okay, how would one, okay, for a single person, how would one, because I guess, how would one date themselves, I guess, in a way? Like, is, is that a good question to ask? Or, I mean, like, is that good? It's like, well, because I'm single, I'm going to date myself for a while. Sure. I mean, I guess it also depends on what your purpose is. Okay. Uh, sometimes people date themselves be after a breakup mm -hmm. or to get to know themselves. They do a dating detox. Like all mm -hmm. these are really good reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just say that go on dates like you would and you're the only one on them. <laughs> Whether it's, okay. uh, I mean, do you, it's, do you answer yourself though on a date? <laughs> <laughs> well, then you might really have to see me. Um, no, okay. but I think it's a great opportunity to figure okay. out what your needs are. Okay. Uh, a lot of times when I ask my clients, what are your needs? They look mm -hmm. at me pretty blankly with a blank stare. Like they don't know exactly just like wow. that. Wow. Um, I think, I think everyone knows what they need. Is I guess a matter of them opening up or do they know what they need in uh, relationships? I don't think they do. Okay. Okay. I think maybe it's a feeling that something's off or they, they don't get it, but they mm -hmm. can't really pinpoint what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I do walk my clients through an exercise of figuring out what their needs are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that could even be you, when you're single, you could find out, do you prefer alone time? Do you miss adventure? Mm -hmm. uh, are there, like you could learn about yourself, explore more things about yourself, like mm -hmm. take hobbies or do things that mm -hmm. are out of your comfort zone mm -hmm. so that you can... Uh, you know, see what's important to you. Okay. And I also think like one of the biggest things is overcoming fear. A lot mm -hmm. of people, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but some people stay in relationships because they don't want to be single. Like they're scared they're going to be alone forever. And so mm -hmm. dating yourself is also an opportunity to prove to yourself, like I could do this, you know, even if mm -hmm. it's by myself. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I used to, um, that saying, what they say, um, you can never love somebody until you love yourself first. Right. And Correct. so for me, my definition for a long time, I thought when you loved yourself, that means, well, I can take myself to the movie. Mm -hmm. I can take myself uh, out to dinner. I can, you know, get a pedicure and a manicure or read a good book or get a hobby. Mm -hmm. And that meant I love myself. But as time progressed, I began to look at it a little deeper mm -hmm. because I have a lot, you know, I have a lot of friends that may call and ask me questions sure. about relationships. And, you know, I have some friends that they like the person so much that they'll let them drive the car and neither one of them have insurance or license. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, they, they'll get a payday loan for their boo. You mm -hmm. know, they want to do little things like that. And so what happened for me, how it, it, it just changed in my mind about loving yourself is, to me, is more than just taking yourself to the movies and stuff like that. It's about the intentions mm -hmm. that you would give that other person. Would you give that same intentions back to yourself? Like the intentions that I'll go all out for this person or, you know, I'll put myself on the line for this person. Right. And how you expect to be treated. Mm -hmm. So like if you respect the person that you're with, then absolutely you have to respect yourself because if they disrespect you, that's what you're going to think that you deserve mm -hmm. and then you won't stand up for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So I, I date myself. I up my cute quotient. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I like myself okay <laughs> maybe a little too much <laughs> all right everybody okay so the next okay we want to ask this question how do couples lose the spark it's usually pretty gradually actually uh -huh. one of the top reasons for divorce is emotional disconnection and mm -hmm. that's not something that happens overnight it's something that takes actually several years mm -hmm. uh, the biggest problem that I have is that we're just too busy my couples don't prioritize each other mm -hmm. um, I remember one of my clients said that he felt like he was fifth on the list after mm -hmm. the dog you know, you got mm -hmm. the kids, the career, and then the dog. That was pretty mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. uh, couples just aren't intentional. Um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of clients who will say things like, well, you know, we were in love on our marriage day or when we first got married, and mm -hmm. I, we just thought that the love mm -hmm. was supposed to be there. And mm -hmm. then, you know, over time, if you don't prioritize each other, you're not intentional, then that starts to fade. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times people focus on the negative, you know, instead of the positive, that's something that you have to nurture. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to be actually like actively thinking about the positive things about your partner. Mm -hmm. um, and then- And I, I read one of your tweets, uh, up, say something good about your partner. It was a yes. tweet you had. Yes. Other, uh, something right. that you appreciate. Right, right. something because you appreciate I think about that's them. what partners are hungry for, knowing mm -hmm. that their partner appreciates them, respects them, mm -hmm. that they're an important part of their life. Okay. Like, 
I appreciate how you don't drink up all the beer. <laughs> no. Or that. That works. <laughs> all right, no. no, I'm just joking, everybody. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> okay, so in cases like that, so when the, uh, when the person feels like they're fifth on the ladder, it makes mm -hmm. me sometimes think that, okay, so is the foreplay gone? And, the, and foreplay is not necessarily always kissing, kissing, kissing. Right. It's the little <clears throat> things like hold the door, are you okay? You know, you need anything from the grocery store? You know, little things like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, my clients, especially the couples, they miss the things that they did when they first started dating. Mm -hmm. And again, that has to be intentional. You have to remember those things. And mm -hmm. foreplay should be 24-7, mm -hmm. you know, minus mm -hmm. the sleeping. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not just reserved for 30 minutes before the, you know, before you go into the bedroom. Mm -hmm. And so um, I asked my clients, what did you do be when you were dating before you got married or even in the couple uh, first years of marriage that you miss? And mm -hmm. just last week, one of my clients came up with a list of 75 things that he'd still like to do with his wife. 75? 75. Wow. So they, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. So that's kind of serious. Yeah. But they feel disconnected. They feel disconnected. Right. And mm -hmm. so they stopped doing those things. And so that's what we, you know, we have to keep doing. And some of the things like, because it is, you know, date your mate month, mm -hmm. um, I love the idea of May being a designated month for that as a reminder, but I really challenge, you know, the viewers and the callers to mm -hmm. think about it, you know, for all 365 days. It's mm -hmm. not enough just to be reminded for one month. So I really mm -hmm. wish it was date your right. mate all year. <laughs> date, your, wait, date your mate for life. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, right. even like mm -hmm. call your partner right now and just tell them that you're calling to say hi don't talk about logistics don't talk about kids or what errands you mm -hmm. need to do or what you need scheduled this weekend mm -hmm. just call and say you know i wanted to hear your voice and you'll see what a difference that makes um, or hug each other uh, okay. i talk to my clients a lot about rituals mm -hmm. so a ritual is something that is repeated it's coordinated you know what's expected of you and it's significant mm -hmm. so one thing uh, one way to do that is when you come home from work tonight uh, or if you're already there doesn't matter you could do it tomorrow but approach your partner and either kiss them give them a hug tell them you you know miss them uh, and that way you just have a way of connecting mm -hmm. that's expected you know every day mm -hmm. so can you do this with glass bottles because that's what <laughs> that's my mate a <laughs> lot Oh, so see, this is why we have to get you a mate. That's why I'm here. <laughs> so when I hug a glass bottle, it typically don't say, I love you back, Charlie. You have a pet? <laughs> you can practice on a pet. <laughs> I have a chia pet. <laughs> That's the reference. <laughs> okay. okay, so what are some date date your mate ideals? Well, the, the ritual is one of them. So like okay. that would be something that uh, clients can do. Uh, one of my friends, actually, they have a bedtime ritual where they rub noses uh, before they go to bed. They do it every single night. Uh, one of my couples, had my, my clients, felt disconnected, and so they were usually too exhausted at the end of the day to, mm -hmm. you know, talk with each other. And so we um, established a, co a coffee ritual in the morning mm -hmm. where they would set it the night before, and then they would get up, and for about... 15 to 20 minutes every morning they that would be their couple time okay uh like i said before just calling your partner during the work day just to say hi uh gifts they don't have to be expensive but little mm -hmm. gifts like your favorite candy you know you know your partner's going through a hard they have a hard day get them their favorite be considerate candy. yes exactly awaken their soul anything basically. right because look when you were dating it was so easy to tell your date or show them that they were on your mind right mm -hmm. you would call them you would text them you would stalk them exactly <laughs> <laughs> you know show up at their front door at 10 p.m <laughs> no that's a little excessive um oh it is okay <laughs> Uh, no. But but you would have like always, you know, you would hug, you would kiss, you would even make out. Mm -hmm. I mean, the number of couples that I've asked after they've been dating a year, do you still mm -hmm. make out with each other? And they say no is astounding. And so even wow. just like touch is so powerful. And that what that's is that, that reason? I mean, is it is it I mean, what would be the reason? Like if you're with the person, you stop making out with them for a year. I don't know. I, I mean, honestly, like I don't know because it surprises me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's that. I think partly it might be the infatuation wears off and then mm -hmm. you kind of kind of get into a rut. But again, mm -hmm. I think that goes back to my point about being intentional. Make mm -hmm. out with your partner during a commercial break tonight and mm -hmm. see what happens. Okay. <laughs> okay. And even I do want to say one thing also about like yes. cause sex mm -hmm. is so important that um, again, especially with clients who have kids, couples who have kids, mm -hmm. uh, scheduling sex or 
you know, finding time for it is very difficult. Mm -hmm. So find the time when you're actually feeling refreshed. For some mm -hmm. of my couples, that's like a weekend morning. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> put it on the calendar or you know, pick one of the days to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And that way you uh, maintain that connection in one of the most powerful ways that you possibly can. All right. Yeah, because some mates, they don't like it scheduled. They like it sporadic. Right. Spontaneous. Right. right. Okay. And that can be a problem because that's, that's, they say that's the problem a lot of times that when couples are fighting, mm -hmm. one is not actually hearing what the other one is saying. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh. Well, my, my response to the person who wants spontaneous sex is then you better initiate. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So how do you know if your expectations are realistic or your oh yeah, basically realistic expectations? Yeah, this is a case by case basis, but okay. I do call myself a myth buster, um, okay. not like the science kind, but the love kind, because okay. I, I do provide a lot of information for both singles and couples about myths. Like I think you even mentioned, um, the love, like it, Love will happen when you least expect it. Right, love will happen when you least expect it. Yeah, I don't agree. You I don't think you agree. have to be. I think you have to be proactive, just like <laughs> anything else in okay. life, like your career, okay. you know, your job, your studies. Mm -hmm. You have to put effort. Okay. Um, a lot of some some of my clients. They, <laughs> <laughs> I know, so I have I have the wrong love well, the love arrow. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you have to you have to be proactive. Like okay, you have to people be proactive. think love should be easy, and then mm -hmm. when it's not, they think, well, we're just not meant to be, mm -hmm. or this is the wrong person. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Like it, there you do require effort. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my clients thinks that there should be minor differences in a relationship, and he wonders why he's still single in his forties. Mm -hmm. uh, differences are inevitable. It's how mm -hmm. you manage them that's more important than mm -hmm. the fact that you actually have differences. Mm -hmm. um, I have people who like think that they shouldn't have to ask for things from their partner. That their partner should, should just know. know. Yes. that's a huge problem. Yeah, because I, I went the one time I did date. Uh, <laughs> just the one time. Yeah, the one time. <laughs> I think it's primitive. No. <laughs> it shows weak. Do not be weak. <laughs> Love is weakness. No. Okay. Oh, we'll go there. <laughs> All right. But um, no, I had that problem. And I think it's not about being self-righteous. It's just that you think that, and that's the problem with how people get messed up because you think mm -hmm. the person is supposed to, not in a, in a way you think they're supposed to kind of rescue mm -hmm. you in a way like you're going to make all my problems go away. Um, and so you're supposed to know what I like because right. you love me. We're connected with each other. And right. so you should know what I like or don't right. like what I'm thinking. And to, to, an, to a degree, yes, mm -hmm. I think it's both. But I think especially if you just start dating someone, mm -hmm. there has to be... Uh, communication about what it is that you need because people cannot read your mind mm -hmm. and as you spend more time together and if they could they'd be in Vegas <laughs> <laughs> not really yeah. but I mean but it's also a, a test of right. um, how much you pay attention mm -hmm. right because That's if you right. pay attention mm -hmm. to what your partners likes and dislikes are your dates mm -hmm. you know what they're all about then that goes back to how you can still romance them mm -hmm. right if they're having a bad day and you know they love Snickers then you're gonna get them you know a Snickers bar mm -hmm. this is not I mean a mm -hmm. Something super small. Right. Um, pay attention. Pay attention to detail. If yes. you want to have a work of art, pay attention to the detail. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then also, if you feel like you're, you have expectations and then you feel hurt, like the hurt is something to pay attention to mm -hmm. because then you absolutely need to communicate that to your partner. You want to give them the opportunity to fix it mm -hmm. because they probably did not intend to hurt your feelings. And so if you tell them that hurt my feelings, you could talk about your expectations and then give them the opportunity to at least address it with you. And then if your partner says things to you like, I feel like I can't do anything right or nothing is ever good enough, then that's probably an indication that your expectations are a little too high. Okay, so that that's the sign. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Okay. So you've attracted the wrong type the the wrong type of person several times in the past. So how does that happen? A pattern dater, they call it, a rerun dater. Right. Well, it you know, and when my clients come in because they do want to know like why am I single? I do always ask them, do you have a type? And when they say yes, so I ask them, what is your the type? type that breathes. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them are a little bit more narrow than that. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but like, for instance, I was just working with a client yesterday and she said that her type is the cocky kind. 
But then the more that we talked about it, it turns out that it wasn't that she was really into a guy who was cocky, but she loved the confidence that came from a guy who was intelligent and was able to speak very well about it, mm -hmm. let's say a certain topic. Mm -hmm. So then I said, well, mm -hmm. looking for someone who's cocky is very different than looking for someone who's intelligent. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. um, so, so I did not because you up. Yeah. And I think, and I'm not trying to change the show, <laughs> but no, I think that meditation thing is good because you have to articulate what you want because an example with that like she thought she wanted something cocky or then if she, one of her friends would try to set her up right. you have to articulate and write it down like well i like this 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 yeah. this yeah a, a major like obstacle that my singles have is that they really don't know like what they're looking for uh like even the same client when i asked her why do you want someone who's let's say confident or cocky she's like you know what? I don't know. Like she wasn't even able to articulate why, which goes back to my point, you know, earlier about what are your needs? Because I don't, I, I haven't worked with a lot of clients who are like, yes, I need this, I need this, I need this. It's more of like, I don't know. I have to think about it. I need it. a pizza. I need some <laughs> shrimp. I need a Coca Cola, a cherry Coca Cola. <laughs> those are wants. <laughs> oh, those, those are, are needs. wants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> oh, sorry, everybody. All right, okay. Now we see, okay. All right, all right. So, all right, okay. So, um, <laughs> How do you get the sexy? Okay, so, you know, we talked about that, how to get the sexy back in the marriage, mm -hmm. you know, paying attention with everyone like that. Um, what are high conflict couple examples? Uh, well, one thing I do want to say also about like the sexy in the mm -hmm. marriage, because it goes back to part of the reason why some couples fight so much mm -hmm. is that when people think that the romance or the sexiness has gotten out of their marriage, they think mm -hmm. that they need new positions or new toys, mm -hmm. but really what you need is connection and to create safety in your relationship. Mm -hmm. So one way to do that, which is really scary for people is to be vulnerable. I mean, nobody wants to get hurt. Nobody wants to bear We talked the, about that, yeah. the vulnerability thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I told you I would circle back to it. Uh, okay. But to be vulnerable, nobody wants to bear their soul and then have mm -hmm. their partner reject them. Right, that is the more like rip it out and crush it. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's like a crushing death experience, right? But knowing that when your partner takes the risk, right. your responsibility as the partner is to respond in a very supportive, mm -hmm. you know, way, like recognizing mm -hmm. it, supporting them, being there for them, because ultimately in a relationship, the way to create safety is knowing that when we need our partner, that they are there for them, that we could mm -hmm. that we can depend on them, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what, mm -hmm. um, and that mm -hmm. we're special to them. Mm -hmm. So again, the special mm -hmm. piece comes back with date mm -hmm. your mate month, try to do something every day, even if it's only 30 seconds or a minute, mm -hmm. uh, to connect with your partner. I, not because I, that's one of the tests I ask my, my friends, that, like, I have a lot of women friends that mm -hmm. ask questions, and I'll say, this is how you know if you want to date this person or not. Do they give you lip when you ask them to go to the store for them. If they talk back, they'll give you a hard time. No, because I think that's but, the beginning of it. Yeah, and actually right. that's, I mean, that's a specific example, but if you globalize it, it's when you ask your partner for something that you need or something that's important to you, how do they respond? Absolutely, mm -hmm. that is a key piece to look for, especially if you're dating. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if they're if they're open or and they available, go, <sighs> yes. What's yeah. gonna happen five months exactly. down the road? With yeah, that. when you ask for something like a more... kidney, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> or something just on the emotional level, like some support, <laughs> no, <laughs> that would work too. <laughs> No, I'm for real. I think about that stuff. I do. <laughs> You're so funny. But anyway, going back to your question about the high conflict couples, there's two reasons, uh, at least two reasons why couples fight a lot. A lot of my couples come in and they communicate fine with me, but they tell me that they can't communicate with their partner. Okay. And one, going back to dispelling myths, when you're in a relationship, no matter who you're with, you're going to have differences. You're going to have what are called perpetual issues, and that's something that you don't see eye to eye on. Mm -hmm. And sometimes couples try to get uh, change their partner's you know point of view. They think that they're right and their partner is wrong, and that always leads to conflict. Mm -hmm. And so looking at things like if you're a spender married to a saver, that's always going to have some natural conflict there. But mm -hmm. instead of trying to change each other, it's learning how to manage those differences so that it doesn't tear your relationship apart. And a lot of times people like don't want to compromise, but that's something that you have to do in a relationship. And then even just how couples bring up something that bothers them, uh, making demands versus requests. And then the other reason why couples um, have high conflict is because they're really protests over disconnection. Couples feel disconnected. They don't know how to convey that because, mm -hmm. again, it requires vulnerability, which a lot of people are not comfortable doing. And... Um, 
and so they feel disconnected, disrespected, unappreciated, and then they don't really address the issue. Okay, so we're about to wrap up. So yeah. if, if you want to give an exercise to our couples and to our singles, what would those, what would those two exercises be? Uh, for my singles, I would say put yourself out there and be very proactive in uh, finding you know, a date or going on several dates. And then for my couples, do one thing today that you think would be very meaningful to your partner. Okay. All right. That's good. I think that's good. I All think right. that's really good. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go home and water my chia pet tonight. <laughs> and I'm going to be You're happy, so America. <laughs> happy, happy, happy. All right. So unfortunately, everybody, once again, introduce yourself once again. I'm Anita Chapala. Okay. And we thank Anita for coming out. And we're going to have more from her. She definitely want to come out and give yeah. us some more um, coaching on relationships because happiness is, you know, great. Learning to be happy. Happy if you're single, being happy if you're a couple. Happiness should just be like the blob, just ooze all over the place in your life. All right, I'm Charlie Bonds. I'm your host. Um, tune in next week, same bad time, same bad channel, for another episode of SEIU Says. And I hope everyone have a beautiful, safe week. Thank you.